What's going on guys? Welcome to another Owen Performance Essentials Routine. Today, we are doing foot health. We're gonna be working on foot health. It's not necessarily so much of a routine uh, as it is just some general guidelines and really understanding what you need to do to kind of start understanding how to control your foot and take control of your foot. Now, why foot health? Foot health has literally been one of the most kind of interesting and new developing topics in the sports and training world, especially in the strength conditioning world. Um, we've been doing it here. We've been paying attention to it for the past three to four years now, really started implementing a lot of barefoot training um, and really just understanding how to use some basic tools that you can use around the house uh, to essentially just improve your body's function and how your body moves because it is very telling in regards to injuries and movement and dysfunction. So for today, all you're gonna need is a ball, lacrosse ball will be preferable, and a face towel or a hand towel. Nothing else is really needed, super simple stuff. Grab those things and let's get going. So the first phase of understanding how to take care of the feet is soft tissues, really improving the tissue quality of your muscles in your foot. Now, the muscles that are gonna be in your foot that we're really gonna focus on today are gonna to be the bottom portion of your feet. That's what's creating that arch that we all know of. And you've probably heard this collapsing arches, uh, you know, inverted feet, you know, collapsing in, not stable. You know, you've either heard of kind of some pain syndromes like Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis. All of these things are basically just dysfunctions of the foot. You've got a poor functioning foot. And the reason for that is simply because the footwear that we're using, for the most part, the, foot, the footwear that we're using is compromising our body's ability to understand and go and recruit the important muscles that are underneath the feet. This is extremely common, not just in athletes, the everyday individual, you know, whether you work in an office or not, this is a huge, huge component because usually the footwear we're wearing, whether it be high heels, dress shoes, you know, some types of sandals are actually kind of compromising too because the straps that are over the side push us in. So even shoes that might seem unrestricted are actually causing more problems. And on the other side, if you're using running shoes, the most common running shoe are actually quite restrictive in nature because what they're doing is they create that arch under the foot. That is restricting the body's natural ability to go and flex and get some elasticity out of the foot, which I'm gonna talk about in a bit. And we're gonna be working on some exercises to help with that. And also what it's going to do is it's going to restrict the toes. It's gonna to push the toes in to become tighter. It's gonna create a huge heel lift. And a lot of these things are just unnatural for the way our body functions. We wanna be able to create that natural spring and natural elasticity out of the foot. So reducing the amount of restrict, restriction in your shoes is actually what's gonna allow you to move forward and actually become a much better athlete or even just move without having pain or be able to stand up without having foot pain. So. First thing we're gonna do, start working on the tissue under the feet. So basically the muscles fascia. How we're gonna do that is very simple. You're going to grab a ball. It doesn't have to be a lacrosse ball. This is a lacrosse ball. I, that's what we use here. It's just simple because sometimes we have dogs that run in here and they just like to chew on something and usually we just toss the ball around. They literally can't break this thing apart. Secondly, it's because the ball doesn't slide underneath my foot. When I put my foot down on this ground, most, for the most case, for the most part, like all the balls we've used on this rubber flooring are, you know, they're not gonna slide around, but if you're at home and you have a ceramic floor, tile floors, you have hardwood floors, laminate flooring, these are all gonna be really tough to roll, let's say a tennis ball on, or a, or a baseball or a softball, or even one of those like orange hockey balls. That's why I usually go with a lacrosse ball sporting goods store you can find them literally not more than five bucks like you don't even need a competitive one it just needs to be something that's hard enough rubber so that it's not going to slide around the ground now what you're going to do we're going to take the ball and we're going to start working on releasing the tissue that's underneath the foot and what mainly what we're going to be working on is everything that's just below the forefoot and leading right up to the heel. So this basic box that i'm drawing under my foot here that's what we're going to be working on so you're going to start by taking the ball you're going to Place it underneath or just be just behind the ball of the foot, the forefoot there, where that kind of knuckle is. And what we're gonna do is put our weight into our heel. Start by applying pressure into your heel because you don't want to apply pressure all the way through and onto your toes because if you're if it's really sensitive, it's gonna be painful and you're probably gonna do more harm than anything. So if you want to start by just applying pressure in your heel and as you become more tolerant of the pain, you can start working forward onto it and as the weeks go on, you, it'll become a lot less painful until you're really able to just kind of like 
drop right on that foot and apply all your pressure on. So we're gonna go and basically we're just gonna roll from the inside of my foot to the outside of the foot. It doesn't matter if you're going from outside or inside or if you're mixing this up, it doesn't really matter if you start from the heel and work your way forward. Just, just for guidance so you can understand why I'm doing this is so they can make sure we cover all the muscles. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of rolling back and forth. I'm basically pivoting off my heel. Now, as I pivot off my heel, I'm gonna slide forward. I do it two or three times. I'm gonna slide forward and I'm gonna go again. And all I'm gonna do is just work my way to my heel, working my way back to my heel, and I'm basically just releasing all the tensions on my foot. Now, I can really drive my foot right on, and it doesn't really bother me that much because I've been doing it so long. But if it's still painful, just to make sure to kind of lay off it a bit, and you're just go a little bit slower so you can really make sure you find those areas that might be a little bit more sensitive. Usually the sensitive areas are gonna be towards the inside of the foot and just behind that big toe. So. When you've gotten basically the majority of the foot, you're gonna be missing just that portion towards the heel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna put our, basically our toes down and we're gonna use our toes now to pivot. And we're gonna roll, basically do the same thing, rocking back and forth and go to just behind, just in front of that heel bone, that kind of the bone that you feel when you're applying pressure on it. You're gonna notice it. You kind of run from the muscle and you kind of notice that bone right there. We're gonna stop right there. We don't need to apply pressure on that bone. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the inside of the foot. So I'm gonna take my weight, shift it to my opposite foot with the inside of the foot towards the ground here. So you guys can see it from the side a bit better. I'm gonna apply the pressure inwards like that and I'm just going to roll the inside of my foot. This may be sensitive for someone who has like a collapsing arch as they would say. Collapsing arch is just basically just a knee that's caving in because you're lacking the proper awareness of where to apply pressure on your foot. Usually that's caused, caused by, it, it becomes a kind of a slippery slope. Once we've done that, we can switch feet, go to the other side, and we're gonna repeat the exact same thing. You wanna spend about two minutes, two or three minutes per side. You wanna do this twice a day for about two weeks before you start really noticing a difference. Okay, so for collapsing arches, I don't wanna get into a lot of the injuries because a lot of these could be you know, related to 20 or 30 different things. So it really takes a kind of a, you know, it takes hands-on approach to really know. But this sequence that we're going through for the most part is gonna be a great starting point because you are gonna to need to work on your feet. If chances are that you, if you have that collapsing arch and you're getting knee pain or you're getting plantar fasciitis from this collapsing arch, you're basically gonna to wanna to run through this kind of system, this entire routine uh, just to at least get that main foundational component down because I talk a lot I'm going to be talking a little bit more about you know the the key points to kind of retain from that so What that's kind of ha what's happening when your foot is collapsing inwards is that you're releasing pressure on the foot You're releasing pressure on even that's not no longer evenly distributed Because of that your foot's your knees caving in when your knee caves in you're just allowing that tension to kind of work its way up to your knee or potentially in towards the inside of your foot. So your body's not able to really sustain that amount of high volume of tension in those areas, you're gonna start noticing pain. That's what causes that tendon inflammation, essentially just tendonitis. So now that we're gonna be working through the heel on the other side, usually a quick test of this, I probably should have asked you guys to do this at the beginning, but for the next time you do it, next time you do it, what you're gonna do is, we're gonna drop, make sure we go into the bottom of the foot here. So the next time you go to do this, especially if you've never done this before, try just checking to see, do, do a basic toe touch, where you're gonna try to stand up straight, I'm gonna show you in a couple of seconds. You're gonna reach up, try to touch your toes. I don't even know if I'm gonna to wanna to show you this because my flexibility is really bad, so it might be like pretty embarrassing, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Usually what'll happen is you carry a lot of tension just from your hamstrings and all the fascia that goes up the back of your body that's allowing you to really just touch your toes, you carry a lot of that tension in your foot. So just releasing the bottom of your foot is releasing all that tension, it's actually allowing you to gain that flexibility. So it becomes like almost like a false flexibility, but it's just releasing tension. So if I were to go and do it normally, I would be stuck kind of like there. I release my foot and I can come down. Oh God, I could touch my toes, that was painful. Um, but yeah. That's essentially what you're looking for, is you're getting that elasticity out of the bottom of the foot, so your body's gonna start functioning a little bit better. Okay, so we've gotten basically the foot to really kind of understand how to move a bit better just by simply releasing the muscles, but we need to understand a little bit more for, for 
ourselves that applied pressure and where we need to apply the pressure. So what I usually tell people is, you're gonna grab yourselves a quick, you're gonna grab yourself a little towel. It doesn't need to be super thick, it's not like a shower towel, just like a face cloth or something like that. Something that you could just put on the ground so that you could apply pressure into it so I can explain what, or essentially what we're trying to do. We're trying to just kind of create an exaggerated stretch on the foot and kind of spark that muscle and get it to fire a bit. So grab that towel and let's get going. Okay, so you've grabbed your towel. Now, usually what we do here is we have like wedges where we'll be able to stick it under certain areas of your feet and help guide you into applying pressure, which is more of just an awareness of your foot to understand where you should be applying the pressure. Now, before we do this, just drop the towel on the ground for a second. What I want you to do is I want you to start understanding, or maybe even just with your hands, I found this to be very helpful. It's just draw it out on your foot. So you're gonna be looking to apply pressure here, basically straight across. So this bone is the edge, your inside of your foot here, and your heel. These three points right there is really what you're looking for in terms of pressure. Now, basically if you're, what that means is if I'm standing straight up and I'm applying pressure on both feet or I'm trying to get pressure onto one foot, let's say I'm putting my foot down and the majority of my pressure goes on one foot, I wanna be aware of where my pressure is on my foot. So, am I applying more pressure on the outside of my foot near the pinky toe? I'm applying pressure more on the big toe or am I all the way on my heel and I notice that it's like a lot of pressures on my heel and basically nothing is on my toes, okay? And when we notice where our pressure is, that's gonna dictate where we're gonna put this towel. Usually, for the most part, this is what I'll usually see. It's kind of like a raised, or I'll show you on this side of the camera here. So I'll see kind of like a raised foot. I'll get kind of a collapsing in, too much pressure on that outside foot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a little bit of a dump onto that side. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna apply, I'm gonna take the towel, I'm gonna open it up. It doesn't have to be super high. I'm just gonna apply the pressure down there just to kind of lift that side up to stretch it out so I understand where that is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go wide here and I'm gonna lean in. So I'm gonna go back foot out wide, front foot here. And all I'm doing is I'm leaning in applying pressure, rotating, and what I'm looking to do is start just becoming aware of that. The towel is not gonna be so much under the foot to be compromising the arch. What I'm doing is I'm creating that elasticity, so I'm gonna be driving in and closing. So my hip starts straight as I start opening up, my hip faces out and away. So what I'm doing is I'm not, if you notice from the side here, I'm not driving it way over, I'm just applying a little bit of pressure forward, and I'm really trying to get the pressure to go into the outside, I'm trying to make sure I feel the outside bone as well as the inside bone here. The other thing I'm trying to do is make sure my knee tracks over my big toe. I don't want my knee to cave in. I don't want my knee to go over the center of my foot, which makes no sense. It's not gonna be going over my toe. When I'm walking straight, I want my knee to line straight over my big toe because that's where all the power is coming out of. When you're pushing, it's coming right out of the big toe. It's the last place all that power comes out of. So that's where you want, that's what you want lined up with your knee and with your hips. You want that nice streamline right here. So to make sure we do that, just be mindful of where your knee is. Is it going straight over your the big toe or is it caving in or are you going straight over the smaller toes? If you were applying pressure outwards, usually what will happen is if someone's doing like an exercise where they're standing up straight on one leg, they'll they get this kind of, let me show you from the side here, they'll get this kind of rise in their foot, okay? So if that's the case, if that's what you're feeling, very simple, you just take the you just take the, uh, take the towel, you're gonna apply pressure underneath that area, right underneath that portion of your foot. And again, I don't know if you notice it, but from the side here, it's literally just a bit of my big toe. So it's not much, I'm not getting it midway up the foot. I'm really just getting that toe, just enough of a lift on that toe. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna apply pressure there, get into my stance, driving forward and pressing it. Now, you're gonna to wanna to do about 10 of these. That's it, 10, maybe 15 if you want, just to get the hang of it. It's quite easy for me so I can kind of fly through it. I don't really need to do much of this because I've got that understanding. So I generally will fly through it now and again just to kind of reset it, especially sometimes when I'm wearing like, you know, casual walking shoes outside that might not have a favorable arch support. 
um, you know, if I'm wearing skates a lot or if I'm wearing soccer shoes, something that's gonna be a little bit more restrictive. I'll kind of go through this just to do like a quick reset a couple of times. So again, you're gonna do this on both sides, but what you're doing is not assume that if what's happening on one side is gonna be happening on the other side. Your, foot, your feet are moving independently of, a, of, of each other you wanna make sure that you understand that and approach each of them individually, right? So you may be having a dysfunction on the hip and that's coming from the foot on one side, you may not have it on the other side. So you may get onto this side and notice that your foot is pretty much equally balanced on the other side. You won't really need to do anything. Now, once we've done that, we're gonna keep this towel and we're gonna start just building the understanding of the muscles under the foot to create some kind of crunching pattern. So basically you're doing towel crunches. Now, one of the things that I've noticed with this is uh, it's really done passively. So they drop the pressure back. So I don't know if you notice this, I'll show you guys from this side here, is that when they're doing the exercise, we usually stand back here and just kind of go and treat it almost like, yeah, it's just kind of like you're flicking your toes. But that's what we want to do. We want to be able to understand how to do it with our weight pretty much over the foot. So stand straight over it and then start doing your towel crunches. So what you're gonna do, lay your towel out and you're gonna apply that pressure over your foot from here and you're just gonna grab and pull. It doesn't matter that you actually don't grab your towel. You're really just trying to create that, that kind of grabbing, that clawing movement. Basically, if you were at a beach and you were just trying to feel the sand under your foot by scraping and pulling it in, which is something that all of us do for some reason, it's very weird. I noticed that everyone does it. I mean, I may have, if I'm the only one that does it, this is gonna be really weird because I'm basically telling everyone who's gonna be watching this that I go into the sand and just, anyway, basically what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you're kind of just grabbing the towel and bringing it towards you. I would say literally just whatever the size of a hand towel is or face cloth or whatever it is, grab it, just try to bring it in. If it's a face cloth, it's about half this size. So just do that twice. If not, if it's like a nice hand drying towel, not a nice one, but a hand drying towel, uh, definitely don't use a nice one. Hand drying towel, just do that whole thing once, you'll be more than fine. You're gonna do it on both sides. There's a very high chance it's, you know, if you're wearing restrictive shoes, you may not notice like an instability from one side to the other, but what you will notice is, you may notice a little bit of a difficulty in this just basic movement here. So once we've done that, we're gonna start incorporating some stability exercises. So don't need the towel anymore. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put one foot forward, put one foot back, and all we're gonna do is just get comfortable on the foot. So you're gonna drop down and you're gonna apply pressure on that foot. Try to pay attention to which foot you feel or where on your foot you're feeling that pressure. Just try to get an understanding. Is it on the inside, outside? Is it evenly distributed through my heels? Once you've found that even distribution, the next step we're gonna take is basically just to start actually controlling where we're applying pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply pressure to the inside of my foot, to the outside of my foot, and then to the heel. Inside of my foot, outside of my foot, heel. We're gonna do that three times. So inside of my foot, outside of my foot, heel. Then I'm gonna switch sides, get an understanding of where my foot is, find that center where I can feel everything kind of balanced out, where I can find that pressure, it's kind of evenly distributed, and then I'm going out, in, heel, out, in, heel, and then again, out, in, heel. We wanna move the knee as little as possible while we're doing this. And again, these are exercises that are just to build up that awareness, because usually, like I said, you wear these restrictive shoes, you don't train like that. So you wanna build up that, that awareness. So these are basically, I've shown you like three or four little tools that you're gonna do on a daily basis by releasing the foot, gaining some awareness, nothing crazy. And again, with the lunges, you don't have to drop that deep. You can literally just kind of go in a split stance, get a little bit of pressure into that front foot and then just kind of go through it. This can also be done on a single leg, kind of a half squat position. You can go into a single leg deadlift position it really doesn't matter, it's just understanding. And the better you get at it, the more you practice at it, the better you get at it, you will start noticing drastic improvements. From squatting, lunging, jumping, running, pain tolerance, pain levels, tissue quality is gonna change. 
you might end up cleaning up some dysfunctions up through the hips and in the knees. This is something I want all of my athletes to start working on. This is what we do here at Own Performance. We give them a lot of tools like this to really be able to understand how to stabilize the foot and how to understand how to take care of your feet. Three or four exercises. Get these done weekly, at least weekly for the first three to four weeks. And then, which, uh, sorry, daily for the first three to four weeks and then you can drop them to about every second day or something like that, except for the foam rolling, or sorry, the soft tissue work under the, under the foot. Keep that, keep that thing religious. I do it every single morning before I wake up because I spend a lot of my time here barefoot. You know, I spend a lot of time standing up with clients, so I wanna make sure that my body's not being compromised and I have a good base of support underneath me. All right, guys, if you have any questions down in the comment section, send us an email, let us know what your questions are and we will get those answered. Until that next time, guys, take care. Have a great day.